Welcome to a new video in my home automation series and um, today I'm playing around with um, NS Panel Pro at the moment and um, I given the title of this video is uh, you know zero effort ZigBee to MQTT uh, and zero effort I mean that you don't need to install any programs you don't need any special hardware for example you don't need a Raspberry Pi you don't need a special ZigBee USB something because in fact it is all available in the NS Panel Pro. So if you have a sort of NS Panel Pro stock, no modified firmware, just the original firmware, it actually runs a ZigBee to MQTT service. And the way it communicates with the cloud, well, I think it probably the way it communicates with the cloud, is that it also has an MQTT broker. So everything is there without you know, you having to install anything. You just buy your NS Panel Pro, you set up your ZigBee devices just like that, and you can access them via MQTT. So let me show you this, but um, I mean, my desk is a little bit messy at the moment, but this is my NS Panel Pro, as you can see here. And I'm not really sure if I can bring this into focus and if you would be able to see a lot of it, but let me let me try. So if I go into the settings and if I go into about, then hopefully you can see, no. Yeah, maybe you can see that the IP of this NS Panel Pro is 192.168.1.11. And then if you look at my MQTT broker, it is connected to the same IP. And I have a couple of uh, ZigBee devices configured. So if you, uh, let's go up and then go left. So you can see there I have a motion sensor and temperature sensor. And um, actually I have a, a relay as well. So you can see all of the stuff in here. And uh, so they are all linked to the NS Panel Pro and they all show up in uh, MQTT. So all you have to do is if I disconnect here, you can see my NS Panel Pro is configured as 192.168.1.11, uh, one, sorry, 111, so the same IP, and the port is 1880, and there is no username, no password, and you can just connect. And then you see your stuff. So the only thing, well, I mean, you are interested in the Zigbee and the devices topic, that's where all your devices are going to sit, and uh, if you have ever used ZigBee to MQTT, it's pretty much the same. So it just has, it says, uh, well, the base topic is whatever you configure it to, but then devices, and then every device gets this, um, uh, for me, it's a random ID. But in ZigBee to MQTT, I usually rename it to a more friendly name. Here, you don't have this feature. You can just, well, you have these IDs, you don't really uh, change them. But if you start to expand, then for example, under information, you can see that, for example, this one is a Zigbee Mini, and then it has a power state on. And if I, well, I don't have any switch connected to it, so I'm just going to use this button here. So you can see that I can, you know, toggle this uh, Zigbee Mini, and the power state is going to show on and off. So yeah. I get the info, oh, so far I haven't really figured out what topic to write to in order to change this, but you get the information here. Let's see another one. And this is updated, and this is a temperature and the humidity sensor. So it's this device. So if I press the button to force an update, then, yeah, we should see that the humidity got updated. Temperature is not probably, it's, it was the same. Oh, okay, it got updated again. So yeah, and it sends some other information as well. So RSSI, it sends availability. And here on the manufacturer, it also sends that it's, um, you know, it's an EVLink Z, SNZB02P. So you see that this is a temperature and the humidity sensor. And let me check the next one. What is this guy? I mean, okay, uh, so this is the ZN, uh, sorry, SNZP06. So this is the motion sensor, the radar and the motion sensor. And you can see that it has an updated slash detect topic, which says uh, detected is true. So there is human presence detected at the moment. And then it has an illumination level, which is brighter. I've only seen brighter, probably the other one is dimmer or basically not brighter because it, it does uh, two different states. 
But yeah, yeah everything is here. Everything I need. Uh, what's this one? This is actually my old PIR sensor, which is living in a cupboard. So if I just remove it now, then it's going to send an update. So it's this guy. And then it says now that uh, detected is true. And it also has a... Yeah, that's it. It doesn't, doesn't really uh, send you anything else. Interestingly, it, it doesn't have the capability to send the battery level because um, a, for some of the other devices, uh, well, I just restarted this, thing between, uh, the, this MQTT Explorer, but for most of the other devices, there is also a battery level, which says, you know, but, oh, here, for example. So you can see the battery level here for the temperature and the humidity sensor. But it is, well, except this one, and of course uh, the you know, the, um, the mains power devices, it does send the battery information as well. And finally, the last one that I have set up for, a, for an example, yeah, that's the new button. So it's this guy. So this has battery as well. And then if I press, it says press equals, or press is single press. If I do double press, then, okay, I was low, slow. So this sends double press. And if I long press, then it's a long press, so everything works as you would expect. And it, it, be, it behaves be pretty much the same way as uh, it behaves in Zigbee to MQTT. And if you have seen any of my review videos of any of these devices, I usually test them in Zigbee to MQTT as well. Um, so yeah, it works. It's, uh, it's pretty much the same stuff. The only thing that you don't get is, uh, yeah, you don't get a friendly name, so you have to remember the, the IDs. And I mean, for me, it's easy because I only have one single device from every single type. If you have multiple devices, then I guess you just have to play around, you know, pressing the button, see which one sends an update or, you know, holding the temperature sensor and see which one goes up, something like that, because uh, there is no other way of telling what, um, you know, which one is which. Because this has an ID here, but uh, let me just say, is this was the temperature sensor? Yeah. So this has an ID here and uh, it doesn't really correspond with the ID which I'm seeing there. So it ends 88F2. Yeah, I don't have anything here which ends 88F2. So yeah, there is no real way of telling which one is which, um, unfortunately. So if you're planning to use this functionality, I would uh, suggest you that you do um, maybe just um, add them, you know, one by one, so you can notice what the ID is, because obviously these IDs are not going to change, so you can just, uh, you know, do your own mapping between these uh, IDs and, well, the actual device name. So this is great. I'm actually, I'm really thrilled with this, because uh, this opens up a lot of interesting opportunities. And again, as I said, zero effort, it's not like you have to, you know, spin up a Raspberry Pi with Zigbee to MQTT and the dongle and everything because it's already there. Even if you have Home Assistant, then uh, maybe you can just have this. I mean, it could be, I mean, the NS Panel Pro could be even cheaper than the uh, than buying a Raspberry Pi nowadays and, and the USB dongle. So I think even price-wise, it is fairly competitive. Probably the only drawback of using this instead of running your own Zigbee to MQTT that obviously whatever version of Zigbee to MQTT running on here is uh, limited and it is designed to mostly support uh, Sonoff products. But um, I think again, if you watch some of my other videos, if you have another button, if you have another temperature sensor from different maker, so as long as they have the same functionality, so they have the same device class in Zigbee, they just usually work with, uh, you know, Sonoff as well. So even if you have an Arcada sensor or, uh, you know, some other simple Zigbee relay, uh, even some no-name ones, uh, they should work. Just make sure that you pick ones which, you know, has a, um, a similar son of product. For example, I had a, if you remember, I reviewed this uh, Seed um, uh, smart socket, which has power measurement or power consumption measurement functionality. So that one, I wasn't able to link it to the NS Panel Pro. 
but I bet if I have a simple socket which doesn't have power management then or power metering functionality, then it would just act like you know this Zigbee Mini. It just uh, you know just a relay with a button uh, or even without a button. So um, yeah, I mean, so I think that's uh, that's great and good news, and it just makes it um, you know really simple to use these. Again, as long as you can restrict yourself using devices that are known to the Sonoff ecosystem. So probably I will use this functionality in uh, one of my future videos. Uh, regardless, since I have my own Zigbee to MQTT network, which is running on my server and it has its, its use, it uses a USB Zigbee dongle, not uh, the NS Panel Pro. I will still keep that as my main one, but uh, this is going to be handy to play around because it's sitting on my desk. It's easy to link another device to, and now I can use MQTT as well just to play around with stuff and see you know how they are sending messages and uh, what we can see them on the mqtt network so that was it uh, thanks for watching and hopefully see you in the next video